We've talked in the past about how to be more productive, but so few people actually talk about what to do with the time that you're saving from your productivity. In today's video, I'm going to share some ways for how to reclaim your time, but what to actually do with your time to live a more intentional, meaningful, and fulfilling life. I'm a huge advocate for batching your emails and reaching inbox zero. This was something I really first learned about back in the Tim Ferriss four hour work week days, you know, over a decade ago at this point. This one's already pretty popular, but it's had such a big impact on reducing the stress around my work day that I wanted to make sure and bring it up in case people haven't heard of it. So generally the idea with this is you want to pick one time a day. For me, that's usually in the morning during my morning routine. I'll sit down, clear out my inbox completely. I try and reach inbox zero where I have no extra emails left and that way I can do it the one time for the day and then just kind of forget about it. I turn push notifications off of my phone so I don't get bothered throughout the day with other work emails. Generally most everything can wait for once a day and that's always what I aim for and it has done such a great thing in reducing the stress in my life. You know, I'm not worrying and thinking about emails when I'm not going to answer them anyway. It allows me to keep my time off time off and my work time my work time. As important as it is to have a schedule for your work, I'd say it's arguably even more important to have schedules for your time off or your breaks, you know, whether that's vacations or just days off or evenings off, especially now that more and more people are working from home and kind of the lines between work and home are getting more and more blurred. It can be difficult to fully relax when you know you have something on your plate around your work. Having set and scheduled time off can be really great in the sense of like a carrot and stick sort of way way to get you to get your work done in time, but it's also really good just to make sure that you're managing and balancing your mental health around your work and that you're going to be performing at your optimal level when you are working. And most importantly, you're going to be enjoying your time off when you're off of work. You know, you don't want to be dwelling and thinking and stressing about work when you're trying to enjoy your time off and you don't want to procrastinate your work and that bleeds into your time off and then you don't get to enjoy your time off because you're stressed about the work you didn't do, you know, trying to set those guidelines is a really great way to keep a positive mindset around work and to really enjoy your time away from work. One of the best things I've done for my mental health in the past couple of years is dedicating time out of my schedule to spend out in nature. For me, I do a lot of hiking and backpacking. It's a great way where you're kind of blending in that nature time along with healthy exercise. It doesn't have to be that. Any sort of time spent in nature, if you wanna go and meditate, if you wanna stroll around your neighborhood, if you wanna go backpacking in the mountains like I like to do, it all works well, but there are tons of studies about the benefits of spending time in nature. I think it also helps kind of reconnect us to earth and to the seasons and to the nature and to the weather. Um, I know that sounds a little silly to some of you, I'm sure, but you kind of lose that connectedness to reality if uh, if you're busy droning on and you're indoors and you're watching TV and playing video games and working and just kind of living a digital life. You know, taking a step back from all of those digital things and enjoying time outside is so great and it's so easy for it to slip away in the way things operate with all of us nowadays. So try and dedicate that time, do something that you enjoy outside and try and get some exercise while you're out there too. It's a great way to, to do both at once, but I would highly recommend that you give that a try this year. Reading is always something I've thoroughly enjoyed and I think it's a really important skill and tool and form of entertainment for all of us if you kind of fall into that trap of, you know, sitting down on the couch, you put on some TV show or sitcom and you know, scroll through your phone, the next thing you know, it's time for bed. A lot of times that's just a waste of your evening. You're not really enjoying your time as much as you could or should be. Uh, reading is a great way to kind of change up the way that you entertain yourself. It's a great way to kind of embrace a lifetime learning mentality. That's something I'm a huge advocate and fan of. Um, it's also just a great way to have a new medium of entertainment strictly for fun. You know, not everything has to be learning and, you know, hard work and productivity. Reading can be just a great way to have some fun and enjoy your time. I know sometimes it's difficult to find the time or the quiet space to sit down and read a physical book or an ebook. 
but audiobooks have become so popular lately. Over the past couple of years, I've started to jump on board and love my audiobooks. Last year, I really took a liking to listening to audiobooks while I was hiking. You know, if you're on a really difficult climb and elevation or maybe a more boring part of the trail, just popping in an audiobook and listening is a great way to help pass the time and still be able to enjoy your hike, even though you might feel a little miserable or exhausted. This actually rounds into the sponsor of today's video. I want to thank Chirp Books for sponsoring sponsoring this week's episode and for just having such a great service for all of us. Chirp Books has a great collection of audiobooks available without any sort of subscription. They also have a money back guarantee and best of all, they have a ton of really great deals and discounts on their library for sale. Um, personally, for me right now, I'm listening to Where the Deer and the Antelope Play by Nick Offerman. I've read several of his other books and always enjoy them. He seems like just such a great, nice guy. I love it. Been loving this book so far. I also checked out their deals page and saw there was a book called The Woods from Harlan Coben. I've read a couple of his books in the past as well, so I picked that one up. But make sure to check out Chirp Books if you are interested or in need of some audiobooks and don't want to deal with the fuss of monthly subscriptions. So they actually gave me a code. It's JoshFen30 for 30% off your purchase. So be sure to use that code if you want to check that out. It's chirpbooks.com. I'll have more info in the description and thanks so much again to them for sponsoring this week's video. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, I think what you do with the time that you save from all this productivity is even more important than the productivity and time saving itself. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up in this list is building and strengthening the relationships with the people in your life. I can almost guarantee a good amount of you are similar to me if you watch this channel and for myself, I'm extremely introverted and tend to completely isolate myself in a lot of different situations. You know, if I need to recharge and need some me time, I'll isolate. If I'm feeling stressed or overwhelmed, I'll isolate. And sometimes that isolation can be a little bit too much and it's kind of a too much of a good thing even for us introverts. You know, although I do really love and cherish my time alone, um, I do have to remind myself really often that it's the relationships and the people in your life that really make it count and make it matter. To quote one of my favorite books, Into the Wild, you know, Chris McCandless, his takeaway after spending all that time alone in nature by himself was happiness is only real when shared. You know, so taking time and investing in those relationships in your life can really have long positive effects. So just take some time, reach out to a friend maybe you haven't talked to in a while. You know, I know the pandemic and everything has made things a little bit weird for our communications with the people in our lives. We're seeing everyone a lot less frequently. We might be more stressed and not wanting to talk as much. Um, try and take yourself out of that isolation from time to time. It has a lot of benefits for your brain and your mental health, even if you're someone that is introverted and tends to recharge alone like myself. One of the simplest ideas and hardest things for me to implement has been learning to say no. I've gotten significantly better at this over the years as I've gotten older and more confident in myself and what I want and need. But um, saying no can be really difficult if you're a people pleaser. I've had difficult times in the past with overburdening myself with saying yes and helping and doing things because I think other people want or need me to do it and putting their needs above my own. You know, I think there is a balance between selfishness and taking care of yourself so you can be the best version of yourself for everyone else and yourself. Whether it's business or personal stuff, I think saying no can be a really valuable tool for you to be able to reclaim and take ownership of your time. Our lives are incredibly short and it's all of our own responsibilities to make sure that we are taking advantage of the life that we have ahead of us. So say no if it's something you don't want to do or can't do or if it's not the best fit for you. Learn to say no if it's something that's not a good fit for you. I have found personally for business related things, you know, if I say yes to something I don't want to do, I tend to procrastinate way more. I tend to do a worse job at it and I tend to be miserable while I'm doing it. So learn to point out those situations. You might not even know that you don't want to do it, but as you learn more about yourself and become more aware of these, you know, saying no is such a valuable and important yet difficult to implement tool. So practice at it, take your time with it, and just realize that you own your time and you get to choose what you do with it. 
think everyone at some point in their life should really try and carve out as much time as possible to go and travel. I realize travel in this whole situation we're talking about is laced with a bit of privilege, but there are a lot of different versions and ways to travel. You know, back when I was younger, I was completely broke. I worked an hourly job for $9 an hour, and um, I used to spend time traveling with my band. We would tour a few times a year and go around the country. We lived out of a van. We essentially ate scraps. Uh, we had no money. We could barely afford the gas to get from place to place. And uh, there are ways to travel cheaply is what I was getting at with that story. But anyway, I think travel is a really great way to expand your perspective and expand your horizons. You know, you get to experience different cities and different areas, experience how different people live, ex different cultures. Uh, all sorts of different things, you know, different nature, different cities. Uh, it's great just to see how different people live. And I think over my past 30 plus years of living, you know, a lot of my best memories were those where I was traveling and there were also those where I was broke. So you don't need to have these big bougie vacations or, you know, big hundred thousand dollar camper vans, you know, go out there, have some fun, you know, road trip, sleep in the car and uh, just experience some other locations that you haven't been to. I think it is an excellent thing that everyone really should do. I'm not a super active member of the Stoic community or some huge advocate for Stoicism, but uh, one of the principles of Stoicism is essentially keeping your ego in check. And I think keeping your ego in check is something that everyone could really learn and benefit from from time to time. To elaborate a little bit more, I think a lot of us get really caught up in our own personal situations and personal problems and all of this kind of self-centered world ideas where everything is a gigantic, huge, stressful problem for yourself. Uh, you know, keeping your ego in check is a great way to keep that perspective in check. And it's a great way to help mitigate some of the stress or anxiety or depression that can come with the problems that you might face in your life. I'm probably not going to be the most clear and concise explainer of this. I would highly recommend everyone check out Ryan Holiday. He's written several great books on this topic. But anyway, you know, keeping that ego in check and keeping that perspective in check is a great way to kind of take ownership and control over yourself and your emotions and what you choose to dwell on and kind of being able to move past some of those negative or difficult times you might be experiencing. We've talked about freeing up all of this time and taking ownership of it. I think one of the best things you can do with all of this bonus time that you're gaining is to invest in yourself. And this can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. You know, making sure that you're taking time to exercise and getting proper diet and nutrition into your life. Uh, also investing in your mental health, whether that is seeing a therapist or carving out time to do hobbies you enjoy or spending time out in nature or traveling, all the things that we talked about. Also, you know, invest Investing in the things that you choose to keep in your life. You know, a lot of people think minimalism means no items or as few items as possible. You know, making sure that the items that you have in your life have meaning or purpose or benefit for you is great. And a great way to do that is invest in quality products that make your life easier, more enjoyable, more pleasant. You know, all of those things, especially focusing on your mental and physical health, are really important for a meaningful and fulfilling life. So take all of this extra time that we're working on here and invest in yourself. You're going to be a better version for yourself. You're going to be a better version for everyone else in your life, whether it be personal or work or otherwise. And lastly, everyone needs to make sure that you're having some fun. If I didn't get my point across well enough in this video, I'm going to rebring it up now. You know, there comes a point where you can only make your life so productive or so optimized where it stops being enjoyable or beneficial. You need to make sure that you're filling that time that you're making with stuff that's better, <laughs> essentially. And better doesn't mean more work or more productivity or more of anything besides enjoying your life. You know, life is short and can abruptly end for any of us. So make sure that you're making it count in whatever way that that means to you. For me, a lot of that is the things that we've talked about today. That's why I wanted to share this for everyone, but just make sure that whatever makes you happy and fulfills you, you are making the time to do it. I hope you all enjoyed this video though, and I hope you're enjoying the start of 2022. Be sure to leave any comments or questions for me down below in the comments. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.